Let's talk about tolerances of flatness. So this is another form tolerance that's going to apply to individual features. A flatness tolerance specifies a tolerance zone defined by two parallel planes within which the surface or derived median plane must lie. So it's going to apply to both surfaces and width features. So width features of size. It's uh, going to be rectangles, squares, you know, rectangular things. So we would use profile for things like arcs and cylinders and other, uh, other kinds of shapes. Flatness is just for flat things. So the first application I want to talk about is the surface application. You'll typically see this more often when we talk about actually applying GD&T, there, there's a reason for this. It's called qualifying datums. So normally your primary datum, if it's a flat planar surface and you're using um, that as your datum A, you'll apply a flatness to it. You'll pick another flat surface to be your datum B. You'll make that perpendicular to your first one. And then if it's a rectangular part, you'll have another perpendicularity to datum C that's perpendicular to this and datum B. So with the surface application similar to straightness, we're going to have a feature control frame either attached to an extension line or directed with a leader to the surface of the part we care about. So unlike straightness, it doesn't matter which view it's put in because flatness is a 3D tolerance. It's going to go the full length, depth, and breadth of the part. So if you have a, an L-shaped part, the flatness just goes up until it changes direction. Flatness applied to a surface, the tolerance must be less than the size tolerance unless you have an interdependency symbol or a free state modifier or something that releases that rule number one rule number one, boundary of perfect form. So perfect form is required in this case. What that means is that if this block comes in at a one inch and 20 thou, so 1.02, the flatness can't go over the top of the part, right? So if we measure the part, we come at 1.02, we can't say we have 10 thou of flatness on top of that, that would violate the boundary of perfect form. We could have flatness as long as it, we can have the flatness as long as it comes in under that MMC limit. Another thing is the flatness tolerance will float anywhere in this zone. So say we draw it like this. If we have a situation like this where our size tolerance is much larger than our flatness tolerance, the flatness tolerance can actually float within that size tolerance, right? So as long as the surface comes in between the two parallel planes that are 10 thousandths apart, so this number right here, it can be anywhere within that size tolerance zone. So in this case, we have 40 thou of size tolerance. So this could be at the very bottom, it could be at the top, it could be slanted, there could be a, a good bit of variation, but that surface would still be flat. Let's talk about flatness applied to the derived median plane. So this is similar to uh, straightness applied to a derived median line, except now we have a 3D feature. We have a, a two parallel planes to contend with. So the way we spot this and know it's a totally different inspection is by looking for the feature control frame. If it's underneath adjacent to the size dimension, then it's going to apply to that feature of size. So for flatness, it's always going to be a width feature, so a rectangular type part. So it's going to look something like this. The actual tolerance zone will be inside of the part. Now there's two ways to apply it that we're going to talk about. There's RFS and MMC. Now there is a way to apply this at LMC, but I'm not going to talk about it. You don't see it too much. Just know it's opposite of the MMC application. If we apply at RFS, it's going to be more difficult to inspect. We can't use any hard gauges. A CMM machine can inspect this just fine. What we're going to get is an outer boundary. So 
the largest material size plus this is the most room that part could take up. If we apply the flatness tolerance with the MMC modifier, so this M in a circle, we get a slightly different result. So in this case, we're gonna get the virtual condition. The maximum size the part can take up is always gonna be the same. If you remember the chart, so if we draw the, the chart comparing our feature size to our available tolerance of the derived median plane. So if we compare the feature size to the tolerance we actually get, just like uh, when we apply straightness at MMC, the difference between the MMC of the part and the actual produced part will give us more tolerance. Okay, so if the part comes in at one inch instead of its MMC of 1.02, we get that minus that additional tolerance. So 20 thou more tolerance right here. So you would get that virtual condition, which is the combination of the feature size and the tolerance of 1.03. This can be used to simulate the virtual condition. You can make a gauge so you can make sure it works and then you just use calipers or whatever to check and make sure it doesn't violate the limits of size.